Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. It's Monday, so you already know what it is. And ask Jacoby a volleyball Q&A. Let's answer your questions that y'all have left me on my YouTube channel. Um, if you want to be, once again, if you want to be featured in these videos, leave a question about volleyball and I will pick a random question that I really liked and put it on the screen and be like, ah, I love this and shout you out. So if you want to do that, leave a comment. So let's get into it, get into it. But before we do, make sure to follow me on the Instagram, jacoby.sims. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and like this video. Okay, let's get into some questions. I've got some really, I've gotten some really interesting ones. So we're gonna pull it up on my phone and let's see. I'm actually dead. Okay. <laughs> So this first comment says, I'm going to a volleyball camp tomorrow and I'm super excited. Aw, that's so cute. Okay, so um, the reason why I picked this one is because I want to talk about volleyball camps. So I think it's actually a really, really great idea. If you want to go to volleyball camp, like in the summer or whenever they happen, like spring, summer, um, I would suggest going to a volleyball camp, especially if you want to play like in college or something like that. Um, that is really a really good idea. Mainly because, okay, so if you think about it, if you go to a place where the coaches are already, like that is a great exposure tool. So it's like literally like you're right in their hands. So it's a really good idea to just be like, hey guys, like this is who I am. Um, I go to this school, I play this position and X, Y, Z. So a camp is a great exposure tool if you want to use it that way. And also going to a camp is just a lot of fun, one. And two, it's a great way to get some um, extra training in. Even though like sometimes it can be expensive, but I really feel like that's kind of like the overnight camps that like where you stay like overnight on campus and you kind of get like the college ex experience in like a couple days. So I think that would be cool. But yeah, I think camps are great and I'm really glad I got that comment so I could talk about camps because camps I love and I also like working them so just from experience they're really really good to go for recruiting and just to have fun. Okay let's see. Alright this person said oh my god can you please post videos of you playing or links of you playing. Okay so um on all my volleyball blogs I pretty much am playing some of the time most of the time so if you want to check those out like those will be like in a card or something somewhere on the screen but yeah i do play volleyball a lot like in my spare time obviously like i mean i do it in my not spare time because it's like what i have to do in my not spare time but when i do have free time i like to go play volleyball and i record it so if you haven't seen my volleyball vlogs what are you doing those are also really really fun to watch and i'm playing with a bunch of my friends so if you want to go check those out go do it it's a playlist or something like that on my channel all right all right let's see okay <clears throat> let's see this comment says okay skylar says okay so if i buy a badminton net is that a good place to start practicing i spotted a cheap badminton net in a store lmao <laughs> okay <laughs> So what I told this girl, okay, is that awkward? Am I like flashing you guys? But what I told this girl was like, okay, if you get a lower net and you practice on it, um, it's not going to translate well to like an actual net. So meaning like if you're practicing on a low net and you're practicing serving, let's say, um, you're going to serve that same ball. It's going to translate over to when you're playing on a real net, but the only difference is going to be the height of the net. So if you're practicing serving on a low net, you're going to serve into the middle of the net on a real net or under it. Like your serve won't go over because you drilled yourself to practice and on a low net. So that's what you're used to. So you're like, oh yeah, this is going to go over. But on a real net, it wouldn't go over. So I told her that it's not very practical to go ahead and get a lower net just because it won't form good habits so i advise against that i would not practice on a lower net at all because it just makes bad habits so it's a no for me dog it's a no sorry but brianna says or it's brianna and brianna um hey i love these videos i'm a sophomore in high school and i play middle and right side and back when serving but i really like playing middle and right but like do you have any tips for getting higher when blocking because i have the height it's just really getting up there and hitting harder Okay, so she says, I'm, I mean, she plays middle and she plays right side and back row. Okay, when she's serving. Okay, and but she likes playing middle, but she wants to get higher on her block. 
So the first thing I would say to her is that you're not getting higher on a block, you're actually getting more over on a block. So if you try to jump up as high as you can while you're blocking, that's just more space for the hitter on the opposite team to just use you and get a point off of you. So it's not blocking, it's not about how high you can get, it's about how far over the net you can get into the other hitter's space. Because if you think about it, if you're reaching over into their space, they really have nowhere to go. Either they're going to go around you to your defender or they're going to hit right into your hands and it's going to be a block. So it's really not about getting higher. It's really just about pressing over. And how you can press over more is um, by building your core muscles because that's where your stability comes from. And that's what encourages you to like hunch over the net so core muscles are huge and also if you have good core stability that means when you land you won't land on someone's ankle or their foot and roll your ankle and it'll just minimize injury because I've had so many injuries well not as many as you would think but I've had a couple ankle rolls here and there where I landed wrong on my own feet or I landed on someone else's foot so just work on your core muscles if you're trying to get over the net more and also uh, part of getting more over the net is jumping higher, but it's not necessarily using it for just height. It's using it to get over the net. So if you want to increase your vertical that way, then I recommend um, jumping and actually playing volleyball, like practicing your block jumps, practicing your moves, because that way you can actually practice like your form and technique at the same time while building your vertical. So it's like it's like a win-win. So, and also I do a lot of squats, like a lot of lower body stuff, and I will really like, you like really need to grow your booty, <laughs> not only for aesthetics, but just like, it's really where your, most of your power comes from, and it's like your base, and you want to make sure it's really strong, so, yes, yeah, squats, lunges are my favorite for like volleyball, because they build your legs too, and calf raises are my favorite, oh, jumping rope, yeah, jumping rope is also really good, so, yes, that was a really long winded answer, but that's what I gotta say about that, okay, so this person said, what do I do if I don't have a helper or someone that can practice with me? Okay, so, so practicing volleyball, I think I said this in my last video, it was um, how to start volleyball or how to start playing volleyball for a beginner. Um, you don't need a partner. It's nice to have a partner, sure, like that way you can get more like live reps, more kind of realistic reps but if you're by yourself don't worry it's fine you can go outside um you can hit against a wall you can always just pass to yourself set to yourself you can roll shot to yourself you can pepper with yourself so really it's just about being creative if you don't have a partner so what i like to do is i'll go outside and i'll just be setting against the wall with one hand two hands back sitting against the wall jump setting um practicing my setter jump against the wall, um, blocking, I do my blocking moves against the wall, you can also do those like literally anywhere in the air, it doesn't even matter, I just like to go outside just to sweat I guess, but yeah, I practice my blocking moves out there, I practice my approaches out there, like honestly some of the stuff in volleyball you don't even need a ball for, so practicing your approach, practicing your block jumps, um, practicing your platforms and moving your feet, that's all stuff you can do without the ball, so I mean there's a bunch of stuff that you can do that doesn't require a partner or someone else to help you, so yeah, that's what I would say to that person. <laughs> okay, this person said, okay, I have a question. When I pass, sometimes I get a ball high up on my platform, so like right here, and I have to jump a little so the ball can still get under the platform. Is that a bad habit? Yes. That is a really bad habit, actually. Um, you always want to keep your feet on the ground. You never want to, like, have to jump and adjust at the last second. That's, like, if you absolutely have to, that's fine. But you really just want to beat the ball and move your feet rather than having to jump up. Because if you jump with the ball while you're passing, that means the ball is going to go more up instead of out. But if you're more planted on the ground, you have more angle to, like, get your shoulders down and pass lower rather than if you jump up. If you think about it, if you're jumping up, your platform's going to go up too and the ball is either going to go behind you or off of you and behind you or just straight up. So make sure, you want to try not to jump as much as you can. And that just comes from footwork and practicing your footwork. So, I mean, sometimes you just, sometimes the ball will just beat you. That happens. But nine times out of ten, you want to re work really hard with your feet and just shuffle back, shuffle back and make sure that you're behind the ball so you don't have to jump. And that way you can get the ball to the center without jumping and then... God knows what happens when you jump. So that's what I would say to that person. It is a bad habit. Sorry. Okay. This person's asking what or how do I deal with a coach that puts a lot of pressure on me? 
Okay, so coaches, there's, there's a lot of different kinds of coaches. There's like the nice one, the super relaxed one, the one that doesn't really care, or like the super strict one, or the one who yells. Ugh. There's a bunch of different coaching styles. Um, but this coach in particular puts pressure on her. Um, pressure, okay, I don't want to be mean, but sometimes that's really about your mindset. So you kind of have to rewire your brain. You don't want to take pressure as a negative thing. Because sometimes when coaches put pressure on you, that means that they know that you can do better. So it's not necessarily you know, like a negative thing. They're not attacking you. Like, oh, like if you don't do this, like you're out. Like pressure is a good thing. And pressure makes, it kind of, honestly, pressure kind of differentiates the good from the great players. Is like if you can perform under pressure, you're golden. And also the more pressure that you're put under as a younger player, the better off you'll be when you get older. Trust me. So, honestly, I think putting pressure on younger players is good. I think it really forms character, and I think that it really will help them in the long run. You just kind of have to recognize that as not something, a personal thing that's kind of mean. It's really just for the betterment of you as a player and kind of as a person. So, I would not take that personally. Just don't take it personally. And also, you can separate volleyball from, like, your... You have to be able to separate volleyball from, like, your actual personal life. So, you can't take things personally at volleyball but like say if, if it's off the court and she's being mean to you or he's being mean, mean to you like okay but like if it's on the court it's in a volleyball setting don't take it personally it's all business okay 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 all right this person said any advice to a player who is changing positions because they can pass and middle won't work okay so i have changed positions quite a few times I have played middle, right side, setter, well, bear, I've literally played everything. So, meaning, you have to be able, like, mentally, like, it's hard, I will say. Like, it's not even really the physical stuff that's hard, because usually as a volleyball player, you have the basic skills already, so it's not going to be hard to, like, change positions. Oh, and this person's going to college, by the way, to play. So, it's not hard to like adapt to different positions because you can just kind of get it after a couple practices but what really was my challenge personally was mentally I was like oh I'm a I'm a middle so I'm not even gonna think about right side or outside or I'm a setter and I'm not even gonna think about playing outside because that's just not what I do that's a very limiting mindset and it's not a really good one to have because I kind of just limited myself like I could have done it easily but I like held myself back in a way so I would say to this person like just embrace it yeah that's a good one like just embrace it you know go full out work as hard as you can and try to get as many reps as you can and just kind of like believe it it's kind of like faking it until you make it I guess it's just believe you can do it and you can that's how I feel so yes okay this person said um what kind of ball do I need to practice at home okay so really you can use any kind of ball um personally i use an indoor ball but that's not like the best to use outside because it gets beat up really fast um you can also use an outdoor volleyball but the only reason i use an indoor volleyball is because i play indoor so it's better for me to practice with a ball that i will actually be playing with that's how i felt about it so that's why i bought an indoor ball but there's like an outdoor ball there's a beach volleyball but i do not oh, i mean i don't really suggest practicing with a beach volleyball over an indoor ball but if you have a beach volleyball go with it because it's literally the same thing it's just a little bit lighter sometimes so mm, yeah that's okay any kind of ball is really fine to be honest it's really just about your repetition so yeah outdoor ball beach volleyball indoor it doesn't really matter but personally i have an indoor ball just because that's what i like and that's my preference so this person asked what do i do if i don't have enough space to practice okay so not everyone has a wall they can go outside and practice with or a backyard or whatever. So what I would say is you can still go outside in a in your driveway or something or just on the sidewalk, not in the street because I don't want you to get hit by a car. <laughs> but you can go outside and you literally just set to yourself, pass to yourself, roll shot to yourself. You can even like roll the ball down the, sh but not down the street, like down the sidewalk or down your driveway and run and go get it. Alright guys, that's it for this Q&A today. I really hope you liked it. Make sure to subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye!